Hello, and welcome back. My name is Luke, and this is Theology in Shorts, a channel dedicated to helping Christians grasp theological concepts and to help them grow in their love and knowledge for the Word of God. Today's episode, we're talking about the Gospel. The Gospel is the most foundational theological concept that all Christians need to understand. Oftentimes, Christians don't present the gospel to unbelievers or even share their faith because they have a fear that they might get the gospel wrong or they don't have enough confidence in sharing the gospel with unbelievers. So this episode is all about helping you with a presentation, a sample presentation of the gospel. So as we're presenting the gospel to unbelievers, there are a couple of things we need to lay the groundwork first. Before we jump right into Jesus died for your sins, which is the good news, there are some things that we need to understand about Scripture and even about God. And so to make this simple, we're going to break this down into a four-point uh, outline. The first point and the first two points are going to be laying the groundwork, and then point three and four are going to be the good news. So point number one is God. This is the first heading, and underneath it we have three subheadings that we need to know about God. So the first is God created and owns everything. And this we find in Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, in today's culture, it's widely popular that we evolved, that we are uh, products of the Big Bang, that there is just time and, and chance are the reason that we exist. Well, as a Christian, when you're presenting the gospel to someone, you want to make sure that you are on the same uh, page as far as where we come from. And that is that God is the creator. We're not the product of evolution. Uh, we're not the product of millions of different gods, as some religions would say. There is one God, and he created everything. And the next thing we need to know about God is that he, above everything else, is holy. Matthew 5.48 says that you are to be holy as your Father in heaven is holy. Apart from this, 1 John 1.5 says that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Light being good and darkness being evil, God is completely light. He's completely good, and there is no evil in him at all. So God is the creator, and he's also perfectly holy. And the last thing we need to know about God is that he requires perfect obedience to his law. In the Old Testament, God set up laws for his people. It's called the Mosaic Law. And so if someone were to break that law, they'd be guilty of the whole thing. And this is even demonstrated in James chapter 2, 10, where it says, if you keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, you've become guilty of it all. And so God not only is perfectly holy, but requires perfect holiness from all of mankind. This is point number one. God, he is creator. He owns everything. He's perfectly holy and requires perfect obedience. Now we move on to point number two. And this is the, the heading man. And man, the first subheading underneath man, is that man has broken God's law. Romans 3.10 says that all have sinned. There is none that is righteous, no, not one. And then later on in verse 23, it says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The glory of God is that perfect standard that he requires. And so because we've all sinned, none of us have kept it. But not only has man broken God's law, but because of man's breaking of God's law, he deserves death. Romans 6.23 says that the wages of sin, the payment for the sin that we commit, is death. That's what we deserve. Because we have broken God's law, we deserve death. And the last thing that we need to know about man is that man cannot save himself by his good deeds. Now, Titus 3.5 says that it's not by works of righteousness which we have done, but it's by his mercy he saved us. And so here's the foundation that you want to lay for an unbeliever when you're sharing the gospel with them. You have to help them understand who God is. That he's the creator and owner of everything. That he is perfectly holy and requires perfect holiness. But here's the bad news. Man has broken God's law. Man deserves death because he's broken God's law and is not able to save himself by his good works. 
And so when you're presenting the gospel to an unbeliever, this is what they need to know first. But then we get to go into point number three, and that is Jesus. And this is the good news. And the subheadings underneath Jesus that are helpful to remember is number one, that Jesus came to earth as both God and sinless man. Colossians 2.9 says that in him, that's Jesus, dwells the fullness of God in bodily form. The fullness of God, Jesus is God, and yet he came to earth as a man. And he did this to demonstrate his love to us, and he demonstrated it most perfectly through his dying on the cross. Romans 5.8 says that God demonstrates his love to us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is how he demonstrates his love. So Jesus, who was God, perfectly God, came and became a man, and he also died on the cross for our sins. The 2 Corinthians 5.21 says that he, that's God, made him, that's Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin on our behalf, that we might receive the righteousness of Christ. And so what Christ did on the cross is his perfect holy life that he lived without sin was credited to us and we received his righteousness and our lives tainted with sin and the breaking of God's law was applied to him and on the cross he paid the debt of sin remember the debt of sin is death the wages is death and Jesus paid that penalty for us but not only this the, the best news is that Jesus didn't remain dead. No, 1 Corinthians 5, 15, 3 say that, and that he was buried and that he rose again according to the scriptures. The best part of the gospel is that Jesus rose from the dead. And what his resurrection means is that he was victorious over sin and death. And that because he rose, we will rise in him. So we are no longer held responsible for our own sin. Those who are in Christ have received his righteousness. And so this is the third point in our four-point headline, and this this is the core of the gospel, that Jesus came as both God and sinless man, that he demonstrated his love for us in dying for us, that he took our place, his death was a sacrificial death, and that he rose again. So it's at this point that you have to confront the sinner. You have been talking to them, you've, you've helped them understand the gospel and why Jesus did die for sins. And now that they have heard the word, Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. They've heard the word. So now the time is to show them their responsibility. Man's responsibility is that man must repent of all that dishonors God. Isaiah 55, 7 says, Let the wicked man forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord and he will have compassion and to his God and he will abundantly pardon. You see, man's sin is what causes him to deserve death. And so in order to receive salvation, they need to repent of their sin. Luke 9, 23 says that if any man will come after me, this is Jesus talking, He says, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. In order to be a true disciple of Jesus, in order to receive salvation, you must deny your own flesh. You must repent of your sin. This is even the message of John the Baptist and Jesus at the beginning of their ministry. They said, repent and believe. The second thing that man must do is to believe in Jesus as both Lord and Savior. Romans 10.9 says that if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And so there are two aspects of, of how we must believe in Jesus. The first is believing in him as Lord. Jesus is Lord is the statement that's used there in that verse. And the significance of this is obedience. When we call Jesus Lord, we are saying that we are not our own masters, but he is we follow him in obedience. This is a true mark of anyone who is a Christian. And so when you're presenting the gospel to an unbeliever, obedience to Christ is something that's absolutely necessary to emphasize. And the next is belief in Jesus as Savior. 
We talked about man not being able to save himself by his own works. The only way that man can be saved is by trusting in Christ's finished work on the cross and his resurrection as the only means for him to receive salvation. And so man must believe in Jesus both as Lord and as Savior. So this is a comprehensive uh, presentation of the gospel. Now, of course, when you present the gospel to someone, they're going to have questions. There's going to be interjections. You're not going to be able to lay all this out without interruption. If you do, well, that's great, but it most likely won't happen that way. So hopefully this was helpful, and now you know all the verses and all the most crucial aspects to include when you are presenting the gospel to someone. Did you like the video? Hopefully it was helpful for you. If you would, please subscribe to the channel and leave a like on the video, and that way YouTube will push this video out to more people. Thank you.